The French and Indian War was fought primarily along the frontier separating New France from the British colonies, from Virginia to Nova Scotia. The French were greatly outnumbered, so they made heavy use of Indian allies. It began with a dispute over control of the confluence of the Allegheny and Monongahela rivers, the site of the French fort Duquesne and present-day Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The dispute erupted into violence in the Battle of Jamonville Glen in May 1754, during which Virginia militiamen under the command of 22-year-old George Washington ambushed a French patrol. British operations in 1755, 56, and 57 in the frontier areas of Pennsylvania and New York all failed due to a combination of poor management, internal divisions, and effective Canadian, French, and Indian offense. After the disastrous 1757 British campaigns, the British government fell. William Pitt came to power and significantly increased British military resources in the colonies at a time when France was unwilling to risk large convoys to aid the limited forces it had in New France. Between 1758 and 1760, the British military successfully penetrated the heartland of New France and took control of Montreal in September 1760. The outcome was one of the most significant developments in a century of Anglo-French conflict. France ceded French Louisiana west of the Mississippi River to its ally Spain in compensation for Spain's loss of Florida to Britain. France's colonial presence north of the Caribbean was reduced to the islands of St. Pierre and Miquelon, confirming Britain's position as the dominant colonial power in the eastern half of North America. Pontiac's Rebellion was a war that was launched in 1763 by a loose confederation of elements of Native American tribes primarily from the Great Lakes region, the Illinois country, and Ohio country. They were dissatisfied with British post-war policies in the Great Lakes region after the British victory in the French and Indian War. Warriors from numerous tribes joined the uprising in an effort to drive British soldiers and settlers out of the region. The war is named after the Ottawa leader Pontiac, the most prominent of many native leaders in the conflict. The war began when Native Americans, offended by the policies of British General Jeffrey Amherst, attacked a number of forts and settlements. Eight forts were destroyed and hundreds of colonists were killed or captured, with many more fleeing the region. Hostilities came to an end after British Army expeditions in 1764 led to peace negotiations over the next two years. Native Americans were unable to drive away the British, but the uprising prompted the British government to modify the policies that had provoked the conflict. Warfare on the North American frontier was brutal. In what is now perhaps the best-known incident of the war, British officers at Fort Pitt attempted to infect the besieging Native Americans with smallpox using blankets that had been exposed to the virus. The ruthlessness and treachery of the conflict was a reflection of a growing divide between the separate populations of the British colonists and Native Americans. Dunmore's War was a 1774 conflict between the colony of Virginia and the Shawnee and Mingo Indian nations. The governor of Virginia during the conflict was John Murray, 4th Earl of Dunmore, Lord Dunmore. He asked the Virginia House of Burgesses to declare a state of war with the hostile Indian nations and order up an elite volunteer militia force for the campaign. The conflict resulted from escalating violence between British colonists and American Indians. The colonists were exploring and moving into land south of the Ohio River in accordance with previous treaties, and the Indians held treaty rights to hunt there. As a result of successive attacks by Indian hunting and war bands upon the settlers, war was declared. The war ended soon after Virginia's victory in the Battle of Point Pleasant on October 10, 1774. After this victory, the Indians lost the right to hunt in the area and agreed to recognize the Ohio River as the boundary between Indian lands and the British colonies. Although the Indian chieftains signed the treaty, conflict within the Indian nation soon broke out. Some tribesmen felt the treaty sold out their claims and opposed it, and others believed that another war would only mean further losses of territory to the more powerful British colonists. When the American Revolution began in 1776, the war parties of the Indian nations quickly gained power. In 
they mobilized the various Indian nations to attack the colonists during the Revolutionary War. The Crawford Expedition was a 1782 campaign on the western front of the American Revolutionary War and one of the final operations of the conflict. Led by Colonel William Crawford, the campaign's goal was to destroy enemy American Indian towns along the Sandusky River in the Ohio country with the hope of ending Indian attacks on American settlers. The expedition was one in a long series of raids against enemy settlements which both sides had conducted throughout the war. Crawford led about 500 volunteer militiamen, mostly from Pennsylvania, deep into American Indian territory, with the intention of surprising the Indians. The Indians and their British allies from Detroit had already learned of the expedition, however, and gathered a force to oppose the Americans. After a day of indecisive fighting near the Sandusky towns, the Americans found themselves surrounded and attempted to retreat. The retreat turned into a rout, but most of the Americans managed to find their way back to Pennsylvania. About 70 Americans were killed. Indian and British losses were minimal. During the retreat, Crawford and an unknown number of his men were captured. The Indians executed many of these captives in retaliation for the Naden Hooten massacre that occurred earlier in the year in which about 100 peaceful Indians were murdered by Pennsylvania militiamen. Crawford's execution was particularly brutal. He was tortured for at least two hours before being burned at the stake. His execution was widely publicized in the United States worsening the already strained relationship between the Native Americans and European Americans. Yohagania County was created by the new state of Virginia in 1776 in an area long disputed between Virginia and Pennsylvania. The county ceased to exist after the border dispute between the two states was resolved in the 1780s. The problem arose through the complex and conflicting manner of granting territory and defining boundaries during the colonial period. The North American continent was not surveyed until long after various land grants were made to the individual colonies, and such land grants and even governmental entities frequently overlapped. At the conclusion of the American Revolution, the victorious patriot leadership realized the wisdom the colonial and British governments had demonstrated in trying to control settlement. Frontier battles, including the French and Indian War and Pontiac's Rebellion, usually began when small groups of unauthorized settlers and Indians clashed over disputed territory. Furthermore, George Washington and other leaders feared that unless settlement was carefully controlled and led by men with strong ties to eastern leaders and markets, frontiersmen were likely to be courted by the Spanish in the West and the British in Canada and Florida. Eastern leaders were also concerned about the character of Western society. They wanted to build roads linking the two regions, ensuring orderly commercial development so that Western society would resemble that of more settled regions. Without such ties, they feared the West would be poor, disorderly, and unruly. Washington and others also feared that speculators who lacked attachment to the government would take over large tracts of land and become too powerful without a regulated advance to the West. Western lands were also the most valuable resource the federal government could sell to pay a national debt that had finally stabilized. The succession of forced treaties and military actions against the Indians opened the lands north and west of the Alleghenies to investors, speculators, and settlers. Settlers poured into the woods of western Pennsylvania and carved out farms and settlements as investors and real estate speculators back east bought up millions of acres. Southwestern Pennsylvania, what is today Washington, Greene, and Fayette counties, was the first region to experience settlement. All of George Washington's western lands were located here, as he was reasonably confident that it would become a part of Virginia. In 1771, Washington bought 2,813 acres in present-day Washington County. In 1784, he was forced to bring suit against David Reed and 12 Covenanter squatters who abandoned their homes rather than pay the general his rents. Beginning in 1785, 
Pennsylvania disposed of 600,000 acres of newly acquired donation lands in the West to pay veterans for their services during the Revolutionary War. While a private could acquire 200 acres, a senior officer, such as General William Irvine, could receive 2,000 acres. Many soldiers sold their land rather than settle on it. By 1800, they had incorporated 14 other new counties, including Beaver, Crawford, Erie, Green, and Mercer. Generous state land sales and the promise of rich soil attracted tens of thousands. They were Revolutionary War veterans, the impoverished sons and daughters of farm families from New England and central Pennsylvania and immigrants from Northern Ireland and Germany. The population of western Pennsylvania west of the Allegheny Mountains soared from 75,000 in 1790 to 139,000 ten years later and in the process the number of counties rose from 10 in 1776 to 42 by 1804. In these years, Pittsburgh began to emerge as a great city of the West. Visiting in 1784, Arthur Lee had found the town filled with paltry log houses as dirty as in the north of Ireland. In 1805, Thaddeus M. Harris, after passing through a well-cultivated and thickly populated region, reached a city of wide, straight streets, whose merchants carried on a splendid trade in all kinds of wares from the coast as well as the interior. Except for geographically remote regions, by 1800 most of Pennsylvania's western inhabitants lived in a viable commercial society.